Your teen requested a ride, but this time not from you. It's through their Uber teen account. You drive your teenager around a lot to their friend Jacob's house, their other friend Jake's house, to James's, to Jaden's, to Jalen's, to. Oh, uh, mom, this is Jake's house, not Jacob's. Now with an Uber teen account, your teen can request a ride under your supervision. The ride with a highly rated driver, and with live trip tracking, you'll follow along the whole ride to their friends' houses that all sound the same. Add your teen to your Uber account today. See app for details. Bye, mom. You are listening to Wednesday Wonders on the Mutual Audio Network. Be amazed. The following audio drama is rated R and is recommended restricted for anyone under the age of 17. You there, you're under 17, yes, yes, I can see you. Go somewhere else. We'll wait. Okay. So, this is Metadyne Baylor's branch office building, then, eh? Yeah, very modern and tastefully sterile, don't you think? Oh, I don't know. I like modern office building. All that glass and steel and all the light pouring in and very little furniture. I suppose it's aesthetically pleasing in a sparse kind of way, but I kind of like older buildings. Oh, don't get me wrong. This place doesn't have nearly the character or the history or the feel of an older building, but there's something relaxingly zen about it. By zen, do you mean empty? Well, I think by zen I meant spacious and contemplative, but I think I see what you're getting at. Where is everyone? I don't know. It should be packed with people. Hmm. Maybe it's a holiday. Not according to my calendar. Nor mine. Well, there's a receptionist. Let's ask. Okay. Um, excuse me? Yes? I'm looking for Mr. Rayburn's office. Then you are? Uh, Phillips. Uh, Sir Hanover Phillips. Yeah. Mr. Rayburn said to expect you and to send you straight up to his office on the 15th floor. Ah, uh, thank you very much. Excuse me, just out of curiosity, where is everyone else who works in the building? Yeah, they have all been evacuated. Ah, hmm. Come again? Pardon? Yeah. Mr. Rayburn said that you would ask for clarification and that I should simply send you up. It would be quicker that way. Hmm. Right. So, 15th floor then? Yeah. And now that you are here, I can leave and security can lock down the building. Thank you very much. Hmm. You're welcome. Bye now. Yeah. Have a nice day. Hmm. Don't you hate being late for a party? Or tuning into a movie in the middle. Yeah. So, 15th floor then? Hmm. Or... We could cut, run, and forget any of this ever happened to us. There's a thought. Hmm. 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 Not knowing would just gnaw at me forever. Yeah, I suppose you're right. All right, 15th floor it is. Hmm. So, 15th floor, huh? Yeah. You want a quickie on the way up? Do I ever. All right, then. Knock, knock. Who's there? 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 Philip Glass. Very good. I do the John Cage one, but I don't think we have enough time. Tale of the Waking World, Relic Skies, Part 6. Uh, well, hmm. it's not exactly what I'd call a conducive working environment. Guess we caught them in the middle of a renovation project. I think half-built studs, drywall, and exposed wires is a little bit more than renovation. It's more like the rebuilding from scratch. Yeah. Well, the door at the end of the hall is finished. So that must be Rayburn's office. Let's go that way and try not to step in anything spackly. Hmm. Is Mr. Rayburn a fairly important member of the board? Yeah, he's pretty high up there. You think they would have given him a different office while this one was under construction? Yeah, well, if there's one thing I've learned while working for Mr. Rayburn is that he doesn't like his stuff to move around too much. Oh, really? Yeah, that's why in the Bell Tower building, his main office is right across from the gym. He just didn't want to move it when they did the renovation. Hmm. Or maybe he just likes watching his employees be all sweaty and worky out. I suppose. Actually, it's kind of hard to tell. Why's that? I'm not entirely sure Mr. Rabin recognizes that his employees come in different genders. Well, ah! that's because from a job standpoint, they actually don't. I really wish you would stop doing that. Hello, Mr. Rabin. Ah, the lovely and charming Miss Guillaume. And the easily startled Sir Philip. This is why I know you two are in cahoots, because there's no way you didn't sense him sneaking up on us, Nero. Honestly, Hanover, I never felt him coming. That's startling aura suppression. You really have to teach me that someday. Oh, it's basic management training, my dear. Stick with the company long enough, you'll end up in that class sooner or later. 
And obviously from that expression on your face, Sir Phillips, you have something very, very dire to discuss with me. So why don't we do that inside my office where it's considerably safer than it is out here? Thank you, sir. And as a matter of fact, I do have something dire uh, to discuss Phillips, with you. Phillips, why do you mind the barricade? Especially since I'm not done putting it up. Would you help me with this, please? Sandbag? Sort of. These bags are filled with a silicone-based particulate matter designed to absorb magic energy. Here you are. Oh, thank you. Oh, do get up and make yourself useful, Phillips. What? She's your squire, not your pack animal. I didn't say I wouldn't help. Jeez. Um, go ahead and ask. I know you want to. I have to explain everything else to you. Oh, I'll ask. I'll ask. What's going on in here? Yeah, and why have you evacuated the entire building? Well, do you remember that little incident yesterday involving a certain thing that was hiding in your laptop that got loose and started wreaking havoc all over Baylor? Uh, not sure if I... Oh, yes. Wait, that one. Happy to have jogged your memory. Well, it spent the last 24 hours, it seems, trying to infest and corrupt every major system it could get its hands on, figuratively speaking. Was there much damage done? Quite an extensive amount, to be honest. It's going to take a lot of money and a lot of hours to untangle this particular snarl. However, unfortunately for it, the corporations of Baylor are good for their word. And the programming cowboys and wizards we all employ are very, very good at their jobs. The people who infuse magic into hardware and who write incantations into the programs got to work immediately. They've patched and updated all the systems and driven it out and given it no place to hide. It has, in effect, no place to call home. Fantastic work, sir. Yes. So, what's that got to do with evacuating the building? Well, seeing as we've hindered its progress the way we have, it's a little bit, um, how shall I put this, steamed. And it's looking for a known quantity for revenge. So it's coming to your office? Astutely observed. Well, that's odd. I would have thought that if it was going after a known quantity for revenge, it would have gone after Hanover and I. Well, yes, that is why I called the two of you to my office, you know. You didn't call us to your office. We came here on our own. Check your phones. Huh? What? I... Oh. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. Yes, a text message from Mr. Rayburn. Yeah, I got the same one. It says, come to my office immediately. Uh, I have I, no uh, idea why I give uh, either of you free anything. Uh, sorry. Sorry. In any event, it's got the three of us squarely in its sights. Well, well, why you? I know why it would be going after us, but why would it have you squarely in its sights? Well, why don't you have your dire discussion with me, and we'll see if we can come to a conclusion on that front. All right, let's have that discussion then, shall we? Neither of you mind me. I'll just pile up the sandbags by myself. Thanks, Nero. We appreciate that. Yes, it's good of you to offer. <sighs> Honestly. Okay, first up, Donald Trent. Ah, Donald Trent. There's a name I haven't heard in years. I mentioned him to you yesterday. Retroactive to yesterday. Happy now? You acted like you'd never heard of him before. My association with Mr. Trent is strictly on a need-to-know basis. Well, I needed to know! Well, did you find out? Well, yes. Well, what's your problem, then? I... He's got you there, Hanover. Don't help me, Nero. Look, the point is, it would have been nice if you'd told me. Well, the world's not a nice place. Sorry to burst your bubble. Trevor from Astra said that you and Trent used to be partners. Back in our headhunting days, our job was to go around from business to business and see which ones would be viable purchases for Metadyne. We were friends in those days. We had a lot in common. We'd both emigrated to the Midlands from the Earth, and we were both incredibly ambitious. In fact, you might say Trent was a little bit too ambitious. Quite a lust for power he had. You see, he wanted to rise through the ranks as quickly as possible, and he wasn't used to the way things were done here in the Midlands and corporations, as opposed to the Earth model. The ethics, the long view, the comparatively glacial pace of things. He made a rather unfortunate habit of irritating the higher-ups. You see, his ambition to advance was the thing that was holding him back. You see, if he had chosen to focus on his job as it was given to him, he probably would have gotten a lot further. Instead, he kept trying to bend the rules in his favor. If he'd stuck to one thing, he probably would have risen through the ranks even faster than I did, and I was considered a shooting star back in those days. So they fired him? Never got the chance. He quit long before that. He decided he was going to play the game on his own terms, that he was going to rise to the apex of a major corporation one way or the other by any means necessary. So off he went. Quite a shame, really. In spite of everything, he was a very good friend. I didn't see him again for another ten years when he turned up in Baylor. Working for Blackpool Dynamics. In a sense, yes. But sometimes the truth can be so different from apparent reality. He took me out to lunch ostensibly to discuss the purchase of Blackpool Dynamics by Metadyne. We had a good working relationship with them as subcontractors, as you know. But I have to say the price he was asking was entirely too high. You're not talking about money, are you? While he was ostensibly the manager of Blackpool, he was associated with a number of organizations all across Baylor, and all across the Midlands, for that matter. 
I needn't list them for you. You can look up their names on that brochure you retrieved from Waterford. In the years since I'd last seen him, he'd been busy networking as a representative of a powerful organization called Ave Nova Incorporated. Now, sir, if you don't mind my saying so, we have spent the entire time here looking for traces of the Ave Nova Corporation all throughout Baylor, and no one seems to have ever heard of it. Well, perhaps they would have if Ave Nova ever had been or ever would be an actual company, but it's not. It's a cult. A cult of sky worshippers, in particular the starry skies and the gulfs between, and the denizens that lurk there, the celestials. Donald Trent had been working with the owners of these small companies to prepare them for the world that was to come, at the hands of the angels. You see, he wasn't a headhunter anymore. Now he was an evangelist, and he had many converts. The cult members essentially turned their organizations over to Ave Nova, and then they would offer them up to sale to larger corporations. Once absorbed, it would give Ave Nova the foothold it needed. And very kindly, he was offering me entrance on the ground floor of his operation. He wanted to even set up meetings with the boards of directors he thought he could persuade them. I still remember that conversation that night so clearly, even though it's been so many years. That look in his eye as he told me his plans. The wonder, the zeal. The absolute lunacy. Is it safe to assume you declined his offer? Some prices are entirely too high, aren't they? Of course, sticking with your principles can have a high price as well. After I politely declined his offer, he told me he was incredibly disappointed with me, and he hoped that perhaps with future meetings he could persuade me to change my mind. Later that night, I discovered for the first time what it truly meant to run afoul of the agents of the Celestials. What happened? I won't bore you with petty details, Sir Phillips. Suffice it to say, I've prayed for many, many years that I would never be forced to go through that experience again, even though in my heart I knew that confrontation was inevitable. But, in any event, I managed to survive that first experience with the help and the resources of Metadyne. We marshaled our forces, and we set out to try and figure out who was infected by Ave Nova. Unfortunately, by that time, it was entirely too late. Astra had purchased Blackpool Dynamics, and Donald Trent had died. The official inquest said it was an aneurysm. I think he was just avoiding confrontation. He was like that, always had been. Well, I suppose being dead would do that. You think so? Do you remember the name Martha Greeley? She was the Ave Nova representative at Waterford. Defeated by their noble mayor. But she didn't die, did she? Not until you finished her off, Sir Phillips. Before then, she was badly wounded. She had to retreat into the mills and wait for an opportunity for her power to rise again. But she wasn't quite human, was she, Sir Phillips? Hardly. Are you saying that Donald Trent is one of those things that he's waiting out there somewhere? The way I see it is, Donald Trent has laid dormant for 12 years, searching for an opportunity to stage a comeback. And Ms. Guillaume and yourself provided it for him when you visited the former Blackpool Dynamics offices. How did we do that? During your vision. You met him. You had a short conversation with him. And then he stowed away on board your computer and unleashed himself on the city of Baylor. And with nowhere left to run and nowhere left to hide... He's coming here for us. That thing is Donald Trent? Well, to be honest, I doubt that very much. He probably thinks it is. But the thing about the angels are, they always make deals and change the rules. Poor Don. He wanted power. I wonder how he feels about it now. And speaking of power, that brings me to part two. Please don't tell us it gets worse. Again, apologies for the fragments of your bubble, but it gets worse. The being you fought back in Waterford, the angel, although, to be honest, it wasn't truly an angel, it was more angeloid, it drew its power from the remnants of magic left over and the tatters of cloth left around the mill town. That's not the case here, I'm afraid. So what was it, the components that Blackpool was developing? Is that what's powering it? If only. Oh, God. Nero? Oh, my God, please. Please don't say what I think you're going to say. I... I'm so sorry I do nothing but disappoint you, Miss Guillaume. Trent told me himself that part of the deal was each of the companies would turn all of their resources over to Ave Nova, Uh, including their employees. Oh, no. Oh, yes, I'm afraid. Donald Trent sold the souls of his workers to the angels. And if our more esoterically inclined magical experts are correct, now that they've died, that thing that once was Don Trent is using them for food. All those people are trapped in a continuous hell of being consumed and reconstituted as a power supply. And they will remain as such until we figure out a way to set them free. (sighs) Jesus Christ. (laughs) Uh, Fucking bastard! Nero. Why? Why would somebody do this? Why is it always... Earthlings? That's what you were going to say, wasn't it? Yes. But not in the way you think I mean it. 
I understand if you don't trust that me. That isn't what I mean. Oh, for the love oh, of God, uh, both of you were about uh, to be attacked by a monster. You are a knight and a squire from the Menadine Corporation. You don't get weepy. Well, sir, I, I just... don't want to hear it. Uh, Let's pull ourselves together, shall we? Um, First we... off, you, Miss Gio. Uh, uh, I've done a background check on you, and I've spoken personally to your mother. And let it be known uh, that while you have legitimate reason for the way you are feeling at this moment about the subject concerning earthlings, um, now is not the time or place to discuss them, are they? Uh, and as for you, Sir Phillips, uh, your squire here uh, probably hasn't told you the circumstances underlying her current behavior. No, and while uh, I will not divulge any details, let it be known at least that it has virtually nothing to do with you personally. Uh, and furthermore, um, Miss Guillaume uh, is your squire and you are to trust her with your life. Well, and you are supposed to trust Sir Phillips with your life because I, that's what uh, you do. You're a squire. You are a knight. These are your functions. Uh, and you are to follow through with them if for no other reason than I'm paying you to. Uh, um, Are we well, clear? Um, well, well, just say yes. 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 Thank you. It's like giving me a goddamn babysitter. If you don't mind, we're supposed to be getting ready for combat. Are you absolutely sure Trent's coming here? Did you happen to notice the state of the hallway when you came up here? Well, yes, the whole thing's under construction. Then perhaps it wouldn't surprise you to realize that this building hasn't been renovated since it was built 12 years ago. Oh? Oh. It's just like when we first visited the Blackpool Dynamics offices. Yes, a change in apparent time seems to herald its arrival. We thought the laptop was causing that effect. Well, you're right. The operating system has a tendency to draw angelic power out into the open. We can interact with it then. Doesn't that mean that they can interact with us too? Yes, it's a two-edged sword, which is why it's imperative that your laptop never fall into the wrong hands. Ah. Yes. Huh. Speaking of which, I can't help but notice that you don't have it with you. Mm. Oh, yeah. Well, about that. Oh, for the love of God, now what? Well, we wanted to find out what Trevor and Croyce were up to, so... So we arranged a meeting and use the laptop as bait. Did it occur to you that he might try to steal it? Well, of course it did. And? He did. So our proprietary software is in the hands of Astra now. Well, that saves us the trouble of having to sell it to them now, doesn't it? Well, technically, we found out that Croyce and Trevor aren't actually working for Astra at the moment. So it's in the hands of a third party. Well, that makes it all right, then. We said he tried to steal it. We swapped the laptop for a dummy. He's got that. The real laptop is in a safe place. Phillips, that laptop is a bit like carrying plutonium around in a lunch thermos. I don't think there's such a thing as a safe place for it. It's at the Metadyne Labs. <sighs> all right, fine. I'll let it slide for now, but the first thing when we're done here, you get that kit back. Do you understand me? Yes, sir. Good. I wonder how those two found out about it anyway. Well, frankly, we don't know. Trevor seemed to be convinced that Albinova was a virus created by Metadyne and that Hanover's computer was spreading it. Really? Well, I suppose he's half right. What do you mean? Albinova is a virus, a living, sentient entity spreading through all our systems, corrupting and replicating itself. And like any good piece of malware, it's opening doors to let something worse in. Speak of the devil. Oh, boy. I would get behind this barricade if I were you two. Oh, right, Nero. Nero, come on. I'm sorry. Mr. Rabin, you said that the OS from the laptop caused the manifestations. Well, to manifest more fully, yes. If we don't have the laptop with us, how is this happening? Well, I've got it installed on my desktop, naturally. You two aren't the only ones who get to have fun around here. Your idea of fun is weird. Years of management won't do that to you. Mind your head. What's that? Well, it's a gun. Surely you've seen one of these before. You're right. He really is like that all the time, isn't he? 24-7. And to answer your inevitable question, this is a prototype that fires explosive shells with anti-magical capabilities that are based on what we've learned about celestial power. Slick. Yeah. Yes, it is, isn't it? I thought you'd like that. Will it work against Trent? Haven't the foggiest. It's never been tried before, so keep your mental notes handy if we survive this. We just became beta testers. Managers. Oh, boy. I'd get prepared if I were you two. Right. Ready for this? As I'll ever be. If we get through this, I'm going to tell you everything about my life I think you need to know. Deal? Deal. I'll provide the dinner and drinks, and I won't even use the company credit card. Very gallant tonight. Here it comes. Ah. What's it doing to the door? It looks like it's aging backwards. Yes, that's not going to last long, is it? Besides the door and the sandbags, do we have any other defenses? There's an anti-magical force shield rigged across the door frame, but if I trigger it, I won't be able to fire through it. So let's save that for a last resort, shall we? This isn't the last resort? Oh, be imaginative, Philip. Ah, head down! Hello, Donald. Hello, Rayburn. It's been a while, hasn't it?
have been listening to The Account, A Tale of the Waking World, written, produced, and performed by Kyan Chris Conroy as part of the Technical Difficulties podcast series. To contact the program, it's techdiff at gmail.com. You can leave a message over at techdiff.com or over at techdiff.freeforums.org. And you can follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash techdiff. And coming soon, thewakingworld.net. Back again next week with Relic Skies, Part 7. And while I've got your ear for just a moment, I would like to thank each and every one of you who donated to the speakerphone to Cause. I've got it. I got all the money I needed, and I picked it up. It's sitting on my computer. I'm going to start learning it right away. Thank you so much. You guys threw in $500 for me to buy the coolest program ever. Now all i got to do is learn how to use it. A little behind-the-scenes note for this week's episode. It almost didn't go up. Uh, I'll explain really quickly here. Yesterday I was coming to the conclusion of this program, which was a little bit more... um, well, you'll see next week how it starts next week was how it was supposed to end this week. And you'll probably be able to figure out for yourself where the cutoff point was. I wanted a cliffhanger. And I had a cliffhanger, but I thought I had a bigger cliffhanger. And then um, something went horribly, horribly wrong with GarageBand. I locked it. I threw entirely too many layers, too many, um, too many tracks, too many effects, and uh, too many um, sound drops into it, and it locked so badly, it crashed so badly, it actually corrupted the original program file. And I thought I had lost the show completely, and I was pretty pissed off. But then, um, while I was sitting moping around about that, completely frustrated about the fact that I had lost an entire week's worth of work, um, my wife turned and looked at me and said, "Um, don't you have Time Machine hooked up to your computer? For those of you who don't know, Time Machine is Apple's progressive backup program. It backs up your computer in incrementally. So uh, every you know few minutes of time, every di- few days, few hours, few minutes, whatever you want, it backs up your program. And um, yes, in fact, it had backed up the program an hour early. It had backed up an earlier version of the episode, and I had it. I hadn't lost it at all. Um, so thank God for Time Machine, and, and please back up your computer. The only downside was I had set it up. Uh, the, the, something had gone wrong with the drive that I do Time Machine on. It wasn't quite connected correctly. Um, it didn't like the USB port it was hooked up to any longer. And uh, when that happened, it, um, well, it only recorded the last uh, version of the of the episode that I had was from the previous day. So I lost the last third of the show. So I had to go back and redo it from scratch. And this is pretty much all I could muster because I have a big appointment today. I'm supposed to be doing, I'm going to be downtown doing an episode of Drinking with Ian. So I did what I could to finish up this episode. Uh, I think I did a very good job. I'm certainly not saying I, I settled for less. It actually is a good cutoff point. I thought I had a better cutoff point, but now that I think about it, it actually works a little bit better with what I have planned for next week. So there you go. That's my little behind the scenes, you know, DVD commentary track thing. So again, thanks so much. You don't have to donate any more PayPal money at uh, techdiff at gmail.com. Although to be honest, I certainly won't object if you do, since I don't get paid to do this. I can always afford to upgrade more equipment. So again, thanks for the donations. Thank you all for listening. Uh, Above and beyond that, that's the most important thing that you get the show and that you enjoy it. Uh, Send me some feedback if you please, and I'll be back again next week. So Bye. This is Kai and Chris Conroy signing off from inside his booth. Bye-bye. Do not adjust your sets. You're tuned to Wednesday Wonders on the Mutual Audio Network. Tomorrow on Mutual is Thursday Thrillers, our roundup of action, adventure, mystery, crime drama, and thrillers, of course. Subscribe to the full Mutual Audio Network feed for every day of diverse audio tales. Or... Find the Thursday Thrillers feed in your favorite podcast players. The Mutual Audio Network. Listening and imagining together.